Hey friends, how y'all doing today? Good. Welcome to your level two plot pod flow. My name's Rob Loud, if we have never practiced together. Um, I appreciate you guys being here today. Thanks for showing up. We're gonna start standing today. So come to the top of your mat, with your big toes together to touch. A Little bit of a space between your heels. So your eyes open, but your gaze is still internal. And on an inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Take your arms up overhead. Fingers bright and alive. Exhale, hands to heart center. So samastitihi. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, release your arms by your sides. Palms forward once again. Inhale. Urdhva Hastasana. Arms out and up. And exhale, hands to heart center. We'll do three more just like this. Big breath in. And exhale, release your arms. Palms shine forward. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Feel your feet as you rise. And exhale, hands to heart. Big breath in. Release your arms as you exhale. Inhale, arms high. Fingers bright. And hands to heart. One last time, cue change here. Breath in. And exhale, release your arms. Inhale, arms high, fingers bright. Here's the cue change. Exhale, forward fold. Uttanasana, so swan dive, or hands through heart center. Take a halfway lift on an inhale. Bring your hands to shins or thighs. Find a long, flat back. And exhale, forward fold. Draw your belly in as you fold over your hips. We'll do this two more times. Inhale, halfway lift. Rock the weight towards the fronts of your feet. Exhale, forward fold. One last time. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, forward fold. We'll move into ragdoll forward fold from here. Separate your feet about hip width apart. And let your arms just hang heavy towards the earth. You can rope your arms up opposite hand to opposite elbow. And just kind of fold in. Let your neck muscles relax and release. Maybe a gentle sway side to side. So once again, feel this rootedness through both of your feet, but a little more fluid through your spine. How's your breath? Ramp up your breath here. We'll take it into chest expansion. You can release your hands, bend your knees deeply, rest your belly right atop your thighs, interlace your hands at your low back. And as you inhale, begin to re-straighten ish your legs. Draw your hips skyward, knuckles skyward, and then rock your hips forward, and your knuckles might track forward as well. If your shoulders are willing, leave your right leg as straight as you have it here. Bend your left knee just a little deeper than your right. Shift your gaze right. Let your arms drift left. And there's your hamstring. Say hello. So just breathe into the back of your right leg. So you could imagine We'll just chase your breath from your nostrils as it comes in all the way to the back of your right leg. We'll switch it out. Come back through center, soften your right knee, work your left leg towards straight, gaze left, let your arms float right. And nice and easy, come back through center by way of your lower back, release your hands back towards the earth. And once again, take a halfway lift on an inhale. Plant your palms, step back to plank position. So top of a push up. Spread your finger bones wide here and the best modification for high plank, simply lower your knees to the earth. Otherwise, fortify your legs, strong legs. Inner triad firmly rooted into the earth. Base knuckle of your pointer fingers and thumbs. And then just very energetically try to spiral your palms away from one another. Feel how your shoulders roll back and your collarbones widen. So once again, a lot of effort in this pose. Where can you infuse just a sense of ease? Take a deep breath in. 
Exhale, shift forward one inch, lower all the way to your belly. Try to lower slow and steady. Really nice, flip to the tops of your feet. Three rolling cobras, inhale, cobra pose, bhujangasana. You can start with a low cobra. And exhale, release, forehead back to the earth. Two more times, inhale, cobra. Add a little more length to this one. And exhale, release. This last one, don't be afraid to add height. Use your arms. Inhale, cobra pose. A little bit taller, more of a defined back bend. Exhale, release. Forehead back down. Now curl your toes under, either tabletop or directly to high plank. On an inhale, press up. And exhale, press your hips back to downward facing dog. First time here, same alignment as high plank. Take a few moments to set this one up. So your base and down dog. Now both hands, both feet. Hands still shoulder width apart, same distance they were in high plank. Fingers spread wide, inner triad pressing. Wrap your shoulders, so your right palm energetically spiraling clockwise, left palm energetically spiraling counterclockwise. Feel the eyes of your elbows rotate in and forward. Your shoulders roll back. These look beautiful. Slow and steady. Inhale your right leg back. Three-legged dog. Hold this one up. Spread through your toes and try to level your hips out. So right outer hip, dial it down a click. Left hip crease. Pull it back and away from your left shoulder. So your sacrum nice and level in space. And the energy in your right leg is if you were standing on it, straight and strong. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, knee to navel, chin to chest, knee to nose, pull your belly up. Inhale, re-extend, right leg. Right knee, right shoulder, give it a little tap. Inhale, re-extend, right leg back. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, it's a twist underneath your body. Inhale, re-extend. And exhale, step through to low lunge, hip width stance, come to your fingertips here, inhale, look forward. Pyramid pose, step your left foot in, just about a footprint, straighten your right leg. So your torso closely resembles cobra pose. It's like you're doing a baby cobra right over top your right thigh bone here. And then breathe. So the effort you're putting forth here is the effort to stay attentive and present. And if that is proving challenging at this point, keep your attention very close to your breath. Let's come back to low lunge position. Plant your palms, step your left foot forward, inhale to a halfway lift, and exhale forward fold. Feel the four corners of your feet. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, root to rise up. Kali Mudra, interlace your fingers, release thumb and pointer fingers, steeple grip, inhale, grow a little taller, and exhale, side stretch to the right, arc up and over to the right, hip sway gently left, turn your torso to look slightly up, so you might even gaze up under your left arm, and then rotate your left outer hip just slightly forward, so the frontal hip points, or your frontal hip points, square to the front edge of your space. Avoid rushing towards the future, anticipating what's next. Just be in the moment. Nice and easy. Inhale right back through center. Inhale and exhale up and over to the left. Once again, you can gently rotate your chest to look up. Your right hip swings slightly forward. And the deeper that you breathe here, the more opening you will feel in your right side body. Nice and slow, back through center, inhale. Take a baby back bend as you exhale. Just goal post your arms, lift your chest, proud bright chest. Right back to Urdhva Hastasana, arms high, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Belly draws in as you dive over your hips. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, step back, high plank position. Second set, so always feel free to lower your knees, otherwise strong legs. Keep in mind the alignment of high plank 
Same alignment as samastitihi. We're just in more of a horizontal plane now. Option A is going to be lower to your belly. Take a low cobra. Option B, your first chaturanga. Shift forward an inch, come halfway down, briefly pause. So strong, inhale, up dog or cobra pose. And exhale, draw your hips back to down dog. So I will cue chaturanga in today's class. Always optional. I would much rather see quality as opposed to quantity, in particular with these repetitive transitions like chaturanga. Left leg back on an inhale, hold it up. Levelish your hips here. So left leg is if you were standing on it. Your right hip pulls back slightly in. Left outer hip dials down a click. Big breath in. Exhale, knee to navel, chin to chest. Cat arch in your back. Inhale, re-extend, toes spread. Left knee, left shoulder, give it a tap. Inhale, re-extend. Left knee, right elbow, turning the core on now. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, step forward to low lunge. Come to fingertips, inhale, gaze forward. Pyramid pose, step your right foot in, about a footprint. Fold over your left thigh. And then bring some length into your spine. If your fingertips are down, lightly pull them towards the back of your space to encourage your sternum forward and your left hip moving in the opposite direction. Come back to your low lunge position and then step your right foot forward. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Utkatasana is next. So bend your knees, sink your hips low. If you want to tuck and curl first, feel free. If that's easier on your knees. But once again, build the pose from the ground up. Start with your feet, just like we did in Samastitihi. Lift your toes, find the four corners, lift your inner arches. In fact, the alignment of chair pose, just like plank, just like Urdhva Hastasana, the shape of your body a little different, but the key actions all the exact same. Fingers bright and alive. And as the challenge starts to build, you're putting a lot more effort forth. How do you infuse your experience right here, right now, with just a little more kindness or sweetness? We'll be here for four more minutes. Just kidding. Take a big breath in. Forward fold. Straighten your legs. Dive over your hips. Catch your inhale. Halfway lift. Exhales. Chaturanga. Remember, always optional. High to mid plank. You can lower to your belly or you can skip that transition all together. Inhale. Up dog. Right back to down dog. We're going to rest for five breaths here. And if down dog right now does not feel restful, child's pose. If down dog feels really restful right now, you want a little more dolphin pose. Drop your forearms to the earth. Find a spot that you can maintain a sense of ease in. And then just be there. Just be there. So ideally, with practice, every pose that we move through feels a lot like child's pose inside. And of course, if you want more time in child's pose, I encourage you to stay there. Otherwise, we're going to begin to move forward. So we'll meet back in down dog and take a couple moments to just realign yourself in down dog if you came out. Let's share a breath together, cleansing breath in through your nose, run it out your mouth. Great breath. Slowly inhale your right leg back, three-legged dog, take the entire breath. Exhale, low lunge, step right inside your right thumb, inhale to warrior one, left heel spins in 45 degrees, arms overhead. And so take a few moments here, first time here, so the stance your stance width about inner heel to inner heel or wider. So 
We want heel to heel, or if you were to look down briefly, you should see just a little bit of space between your heels and the mirror. mirror. Once you've ascertained that, let your gaze become soft once again. So eyes open, but looking internal, left hip wraps forward. So it's a subtle internal rotation to your left hip. Your right hip pulls back. And then your arm bones, just let them draw and plug back into their socket. So your chest, once again, bright and alive. Just a subtle hint of contentment radiating from behind your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, interlace hands at your lower back. We'll find a gentle back bend. Inhale, pull your knuckles down, lift your chest. And as you exhale, humble warrior, feel free to take more than one breath to get there. Right shoulder to right knee. If you can get your shoulder inside of your knee, go that route. Let your neck relax. Now your right hip wants to pull to the right. Draw your right hip back. All the while, press your right leg firmly into your right shoulder or right side body. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release your bind. Let your fingers skim the earth. Ride your inhale back to warrior one. Exhales, chaturanga, always optional. Hands to the earth. Step your right foot back. And if you want to go one-legged now, absolutely. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale, navel guides your hips back to down dog. Let's take a breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Second side, inhale, left leg back, hips level. Exhale, low lunge, right inside your left thumb. Inhale to warrior one, rise on your in breath. So this idea, the qualities of effort and ease or strength and softness, let those energies radiate from your eyes. So let your eyes be kind yet very direct, almost a little bit of ferocity mixed with kindness radiating from behind your eyes. You're leaning back onto the post, your strong right leg. Take a deep breath in. Hands to low back as you exhale. Awkward grip, maybe. Inhale, pull your knuckles down, lift your chest. Exhale, humble warrior. One, two, or even three breaths. Fold all the way down at the bottom. Let your neck muscles relax. Set your gaze soft towards your right inner arch. And see if you can witness, get a visual, your right inner arch lifting as a result of the four corners of your right foot pressing down and back, just like standing at attention. Looking to just cultivate a sense of peace and ease. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release your bind. Fingers skim the earth. Inhale, ride it back up to warrior one. Exhales, chaturanga, all the way down. One long exhale, or feel free to Take an extra breath if you want to slow that transition down a little more. We'll meet you on an exhale back in down dog. Nice work, friends. So pretty simple sequence. We're just going to flow with that sequence once today just to build a little heat, move some energy. We'll hold Humble Warrior for an extra breath. Just follow my lead. Slower you breathe, the slower and more deliberate your movements will become. So let's try to flow slow. Breathe very deep and move with intention. Let's take a breath to begin. In through your nose. Let it go out your mouth. Slow and steady as she blows. Inhale your right leg back. Exhale, low lunge. Hip width stance. Inhale to warrior one. Rise up. Exhale, hands to low back. On an inhale, little back bend. Exhale, humble warrior. Fold all the way in. Take a deep breath in and hold. Exhale, release your bind. Fingers skim the earth. Your inhale pulls you back up. Exhale, straight through chaturanga, high to mid. Inhale, find your back bend. Cow pose even works. 
Exhale, hips right back to down dog. Switching sides, left leg back, inhale. Low lunge, exhale, right heel drops, warrior one, rise on your in breath. Hands to low back, exhale. That baby back bend, inhale, bright chest. Humble warrior, exhale. Take a deep breath in, hold. Exhale, release, fingers skim the earth. Ride your inhale, back up. Exhales, chaturanga, high to mid. Pause briefly in mid plank if you can. Inhale, up dog, cobra, cow pose. And exhale, hips right back to down dog. Beautiful work. Ripple forward to a high plank position. Forearm plank, drop your forearms to the earth. So you can parallel your forearms here or interlace your fingers and modified variation just like high plank, you can lower your knees to the earth. So we're gonna hold here for about 90 seconds. Unfortunately for you guys, I don't have a clock and I'm not that good at winging it. So about a minute and a half. If you want less, knees down. If you want more, knee to tricep taps. But your job here is to just listen, become aware. It's a strong pose. How can you soften into the intensity that this posture may be bringing into your experience. Jaws relax. One of the first things to let you know you're resisting is your jaw. If you're holding on in your jaw, relax. Eyes soft. Breath right at the forefront of your experience. So much so my voice, the music, the temperature, the challenge all fades into the background. And there you are. I know it would cheer us up here, maybe a little humor. What, what'd the fish say when it hit the wall? Damn. All right, folks, I'll be here all week. I truly will. I am every week. Home away from home. I think we're about halfway. Do you think that's more than halfway? I have no idea. All right, let's go 20 more seconds. You got this. Let that be your motto. Wow, 90 seconds was a little ambitious, I think. Last couple breaths. Hips to the earth. Hoo wee. Sphinx pose. That'll make you sweat. So parallel your forearms now and just lightly pull your elbows back. So we want to lengthen the front line of our body, lengthen the back of your neck, smooth out the edges of your breath. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, look over your left shoulder. Pull your right shoulder back, gently nod your head yes, and while you're here, admire the man or the woman right next to you. What the hell, let's make this awkward. <laughs> Come back through center, take a breath in, and as you exhale, look over your right shoulder, left shoulder pulls back, so that person right next to you was just admiring you. Even more awkward. Nod your head, yes. But we love awkward in yoga. And come right back through center. Release your forehead to the earth. Press back to a child's pose. First time here, knees out wide, big toes to touch. Take a little breather. And just know moving forward in today's class, if you need rest, come back to this posture. Let's meet back in downward facing dog. So you can curl your toes under, press your hips high up and back. Let's take a couple cleansing breaths in through your nose, fill up, run it out your mouth. One more like that, big breath in, out the mouth. Now seal your lips, take a deep breath in, set your gaze forward, Bottom of your exhale, step, walk, hop, float, top of your space. Beautiful, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Urdva Hastasana, inhale, arms high. Hands to heart center. 
right where we began class, Vrikshasana, tree pose, so our first real go at balance. So find the four corners of your left foot, just like we did, with as much attention to detail. Raise your right knee up, open your right knee out to the side, and then place the sole of your right foot to your inner thigh, left inner thigh, calf. You can even kickstand it anywhere above or below your knee joint. Hands can start at heart center. Now draw your right knee towards the back of your space. Paradoxically, you're pressing your right sitting bone forward, foot into thigh, thigh back into foot, and steady your gaze at one point so you're less distracted visually. You can stay right here or feel free to grow some branches. A little up level, I like to take a baby back bend if you'd like. You can cactus your arms and even gaze up. Notice if you're rolling to the outer edge of your left foot. Pretty common when we're trying to find balance as our outer hips, much more strong and developed than our inner leg line, equalize the weight through the four corners. That might mean a little more weight to your left big toe mound. How's your breath here? More important than tree pose any day of the week is your breath. So good, you guys look really balanced today. Arm expressions, hands back to heart center. Draw your right knee forward, square your hips. Samastitihi, right foot meets the left if you need to pedal your left foot out for a moment. And then right foot's your base. Find your base, raise your left knee, you'll open your knee out to the side. Sole of foot to inner thigh or calf, and then a firm connection, foot into thigh thigh back into foot, left knee pulls back, and you're rotating your left hip forward, and feel free to take any arm expression once again. If you really want to challenge your balance today, close your eyes, almost guaranteed you'll fall out. Falling is part of this practice. Getting back up is the important part. When you fall out, it just means you're pushing yourself, and that is sometimes a good thing, moving past your edge. So good. Arm expressions, you can gently bring your hands back to heart center. Draw your left knee forward. Left foot meets your right foot. Nice work, friends. Inhale, arms high, Urdhva, Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. And now, Parangustasana, big toes pose. Separate your feet about hip width. Grab a hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. And you may need to bend your knees in order to do this. Take a halfway lift, inhale, and then Pull on your toes, bend your elbows out laterally. Try to fold a little more deeply here. And what I'd like you to emphasize or focus your intention on right now is your belly. Pull your belly in and up. Imagine you had a volleyball resting right between your thighs. You had to pull your belly in to fold and clear space over that volleyball. Feel that in your midsection. Neck muscles relax. So your head's hanging heavy. And gently release your big toes. Take a halfway lift, inhale, and then malasana, yogi squat. Toe heel your feet out, mat width. Toes out, heels in. I usually like a little swivel when I first come into malasana. So you might just go a little side to side. And then if you can, let your heels settle to your mat. Press your palms together. And you're pressing your knees apart, but you're squeezing your knees in at the same time. So equal push, equal pull. And just close your eyes down for a moment. Send your breath where the sensation and opening in your body is the most obvious. Right now, probably your inner leg line and groins. You can let your eyes just softly open back up. Take your left hand, 
sweep it out to the side, flat to the earth, and then press your left arm into your left inner thigh, left inner thigh back into the arm, right arm up, and then lean it back. Try to gaze up towards your right thumb. Both shoulders roll back. Left inner thigh to left tricep connection. Press one into the other. We'll switch it out. Come back through center and then right hand, sweep it low, firm connection, left arm, open it up. And then press leg into arm, arm back into leg. We'll come right back through center. Lift your hips, turn your toes forward, take a halfway lift on an inhale, and your way back to down dog. Chaturanga, one of many ways to get there. Feel free to take it or leave it. Inhale, up dog, cobra, cow pose. And we will meet you right back in down dog, our reset, our home base. Take a couple moments here. Fatigue starting to set in a little, just be diligent with how you're aligned. So how you place your hands and feet on the earth, it matters. Let's take a breath in through your nose. Run it out your mouth. Inhale your right leg back, hips level, toes spread. Exhale, low lunge, step to the center line of your space. Inhale, warrior two, open up. First time here, so whole new hip configuration. Feel free to pulse in and out a couple of times. And so if you were to look down briefly in the mirrors, just for a moment, you should see the back of your right heel is now pretty much lined up with your left inner arch. As your right knee comes over the right ankle, pull your right knee out to the right. And that action happens naturally as you pull your right hip to the left, just like we did in tree pose a few moments ago on the right side. Follow up by firming up your back leg. More weight to the four corners of your left foot, so balance between right and left. Gaze is like a laser set out into infinity, right over the tips of your fingers. So you're not gazing at anything, you're gazing through everything. So strong, peaceful warrior. Sit a little bit deeper if you can. Flip your right palm, reverse your warrior. Reach up, up, up. Maybe slightly back, but let up be the priority here. Check in with your front knee. Have you lost the connection to it? Keeping the length in your right side body. Exhale, extended side angle. Glide out, right elbow to thigh is great. You can go right hand to block, possibly to the earth, but really the position of your right hand dependent on the shape of your body and the flexibility. So we're still working the right hip under, leaning the left hip back. And yeah, left arm straight and strong. Plug your arm bone back into its socket. And just for a moment, well, not just for a moment, rotate your right shoulder back. So your right shoulder might be kicking forward. Kick it back. Relax your jaw, relax your eyes. So the pose really begins, or a lot of yogic wisdom revealed to us that moment we start to want out of the pose that we're in. So strong, next inhale, reverse triangle. Straighten your right leg, so give that front leg a break. Stretch your right arm high, root your right big toe mound down. Take a deep inhale, trikonasana, triangle. You're gonna reach all the way out as far as you can. When you can reach out, no more. Let your right hand fall where it may. Shin for most of us, maybe block. A few of us might get our right hand to the earth, we really don't want to compromise the length of our side bodies too much. So if you feel excessive rounding in your right side body, a side stretch, and you're reaching towards the earth, just come up a little bit. Gaze might shift up, and then see if you can just fine tune your hips here, just little micro movements in your hips.
So we will now take this exact pose into balance. Half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Bring your left hand to your left outer hip. Gaze in front of your right foot. Slowly step up onto your right leg. See that your right toes are straight ahead still. Your left leg will lift. Point your left toes towards me. Flex your left toes back towards your shin. So ideally, we're heel to arch here as well, just like warrior two. In fact, if you are able to look down the front line of your body, you should be able to see your left toes just barely in your field of vision. That's about the proper alignment. Take up space, fingertip to fingertip. Yeah, if you have any little variations you'd like to go for, feel free. Otherwise, just take up full residence in your body here. Feel your fingers, feel your toes. Four corners of your right foot firmly rooted, right big toe mound, press it down. Now, if you took a variation, gently release. Chapasanas, come back, meet our friends in half moon. Half moon with a little grace, back to warrior two. Step back, soft, nice work. Five pointed star on an inhale, face me. Horse pose, turn your toes out, heels in. Bring your hands to your thighs and just rest your weight into your hands and maybe a little side to side, just like malasana. In this pose, very similar to malasana, just once again, a little higher from the earth. We'll take a twist, take a deep breath in through your nose. And then twist to the front. Drop your left shoulder as you exhale. Gaze past your right. You can gently move a little bit here. So micro movements that bring you deeper into your experience always encourage, but it's important to sort of recognize or be aware of the difference between movements that bring you closer and movements that bring you away, AKA fidgeting. We avoid fidgeting too much. Switch it out. Come back through center on an in-breath. Exhale, turn to the back. Elbows soft. Breath deep. And let's come right back through center. Hands to your heart now. Sit your hips a little or even a lot lower. Shoulders over hips. So one of the ways we can bring a sense of sweetness, softness into this posture is to just sort of look like you like the posture. And we can do this by turning the corners of our lips up. If you choose, it's an up level. So if you look like you're enjoying yourself in yoga, that is up level. Sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it. Five pointed star, inhale, open back up. Prasarita D, take your arms out wide, spin your heels out now. Look down at your feet, see your toes slightly pigeon toed. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, dive all the way forward. And grab a hold of your big toes, outer edges of your feet, ankles, or calves. Take a bound halfway lift on an inhale. And then pull on your feet, bend your elbows just like we did in Parangustasana, now a wider stance. Feel the four corners of your feet. Lift your inner arches, same thing here. Tendency when we forward fold is for weight to fall into the heels and our hips to draw back. Equalize the weight, balance the weight between the four corners. That might mean rocking some weight a little more forward. Rotation in your hips, internal as well. So your sitting bones widen as you root down through your inner heels. Your outer heels root down, but gently pull out. And then find your breath. Gently release your feet. Take a quarter or a halfway lift, inhale. Low lunge to the front, exhale. Simply pivot forward, one-legged halfway lift. Step up on to your right leg, one jiva squat, exhale, left knee to right calf, now standing splits, take your left leg back, fold over top your right thigh. You can keep your hands down, you can grab a hold of your calf, you're working your forehead towards your shin. Try to levelish your hips here, just like we did in that first three-legged dog. 
Can you get a little more length through your left leg? One more big breath in. Let's take a cross-legged forward fold. Step your left leg behind your right leg. Feet crossed. Fold over your cross legs. Option to just swivel towards the right a little bit. Or stay straight in. So a little prep for the left outer hip. We're going to find a little more opening here in just a moment. But bring your awareness without any agenda to your left hip and breathe into it. Walk your hands back through center. Back to one-legged halfway lift to unwind. Inhale. Forward fold. Exhale. Chair pose. Utkatasana. Been here once before today. Feel your feet. Big breath in. Airplane torso, big breath out. Now left knee lifts, one-legged staff, rise up. Flex and level your left foot. Figure four, left ankle crosses on top of your right knee, hands to heart now. Keep both feet active, you'll start to bend at your right knee. Hinge your hips so your torso leans forward and your hips press back. If you're stronger in your outer hips, you won't come down that far. If you're a little more open, maybe elbow to knee, elbow to ankle. If you have any other little variation you'd like to take, I encourage you to go there. If not, take a moment to elevate your left hip one inch. Pull your left hip back one inch and try to draw your chest forward. There's your hip. Say hello by sending it some breath. Now variations, let's meet our friends back in center. Let an inhale pull you back up to one-legged staff. Raise your left knee, big move here on an exhale, airplane pose. You're gonna press your left leg back, tilt forward, so your body is now in the shape of a letter T. Work your hips level, turn your left hip down, right hip pulls back and slightly up. These look beautiful. Next transition requires a little bit of proprioception. Take a deep breath in. Step back to airplane lunge as you exhale. Hip width stance and then high crescent lunge. Rise up. So back heel is up. Here for just a moment or two. Check that your hand, stance is hip width. With your back heel up, unlike Warrior One, you may need to lift your entire left leg just a little bit and soften your left knee. If you're low back sensitive, big breath in. Exhale, low lunge position. Plant your left palm, side plank. You're gonna rotate to your left palm facing the door side of the room. Lots of options today. Option A, modify, always option A. Kickstand right foot in front of your left leg. Option B, stay here. Option C, tree pose. We did this standing upright. Option D, hand to big toe, if you know it. Any of those four are great. Divert some weight off of your left wrist. Strong hand, inner triad pressing. Hold here for three. You guys are looking awesome today. Hold for two. Optional chaturanga in one. We'll meet you back in downward facing dog. And if this point, cat and cow sounds better than chaturanga, I encourage you to do that. We'll meet you back in home base. We got one more side in our standing series. Let's share a breath in through your nose. Run it out your mouth. Inhale your left leg back, toes spread. Exhale, low lunge, center of your space. Inhale, warrior two. Right heel drops in 90 degrees. Open up, and then take a few moments. Your stance much more narrow than warrior one or crescent lunge. It's almost like you're on a tightrope with your feet perpendicular to one another. And as you pull your left hip underneath your right leg, your left knee naturally tracks open to the right. Your right hip, the rotation relatively neutral, but you're leaning your right leg back. 
triceps lightly engaged, your big wingspan, so you're reaching your arms to opposite directions actively, but very paradoxically, like a lot of things in yoga, your shoulder blades are pulling together down towards your hips. And then axial extension, get tall, lift through the crown of your head. Now, if you can find a little more depth, find it now, flip your palm, reverse your warrior, inhale, reach up, up, up. Very common to lose connection with your front knee here. Just feel that it isn't collapsed in. You're keeping the integrity in your left hip. Keep the length in your left side body. Exhale, extended side angle. Parsva, konasana, elbow to thigh, hands to block. I like right arm forward, but if you went straight up on the first side, feel free to go there. And try to lean your arm back a little bit, almost like you're trying to just gently lean your right arm over top of the man or the woman directly behind you right now. Jaws relax, eyes still kind, soft yet very direct. And you know release is coming here shortly, so don't hold back. In fact, turn it on just a little bit. Next inhale, reverse triangle. Left leg extends without locking it out completely. Stretch your left arm high. Take a deep breath in. You may even shorten your stance here. I usually do exhale triangle pose. So you'll glide out. Your left hip draws back. And then left hand finds its home on block or shin. Your gaze might shift up towards your right thumb. Roll the caps of both shoulders back, almost as if you were trying to rotate the undersides of your arms forward. Feel how that kind of deepens your armpit chest, shoulder blades together and gently down towards your hips. Set up half moon, right hand to your right outer hip, gaze down. Step up onto your left leg. Try to minimize momentum. Left hand to earth or block. In, uh, about a foot in front, six inches to the outside. Right arm to the sky. Take up space. If you took a variation Make sure to balance it out. Last couple breaths here. Variations gently release. Take a deep breath in. And back to warrior two on an exhale. Land soft. Right to five pointed star. Inhale. And our last horse. Just sit in low. Get low. Let's just move the arms. Little arm vinyasa. Inhale, arms out and up. And exhale, hands to heart. Two more times. Breath in. Breath out. The last one. Exhale. Nice work, friends. Back to five-pointed star. Open up. Arms to a T. Prasarita, second set. So a little pigeon toe. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fold in. And I'm going to give you guys just a short 60 seconds to just explore. So you can stay right here if you want chest expansion, if you want to get upside down, feel free. Not a lot of time here. Breath first, of course. So if the pose you're moving into takes your breath away, means you've gone just a little bit too far. We'll start to make our way back out, variations, nice and slow, as mindfully as you came in. Take a half or quarter lift, inhale. Low lunge to the front as you exhale. Right to your one-legged halfway lift, step up. 
one jiva squat chamber right into standing splits inhale right leg back fold over your left leg reach 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 rather than going for height in your right leg go for length and strength press back so the bend in your right knee now gone big breath in cross-legged forward fold take about five slow breaths here Gently walk your hands back through center, back to a one-legged halfway lift, unwind, forward fold. Exhale in your last chair pose. As a transition, inhale, Utkatasana, airplane torso, exhale. This time, right knee lifts, one-legged staff, rise up, feel the four corners of your right foot, or left foot, excuse me, figure four, cross your right ankle atop your left thigh, Hands to heart, fold in. And as you lower down, try to elevate your right hip up. your hands back to heart center if they're not let it inhale draw you back up to one legged staff right knee lifts exhale airplane pose last push we're on our home stretch friends so your torso and your right leg parallel to the earth below you take a deep breath in step back to airplane lunge land soft right into high crescent lunge once you've arrived if you need to widen your stance widen your stance so good big breath in exhale low lunge hands to the earth right hand is your base side plank roll to the outer edge of your right foot any variation in fact whatever you did on side one tree legs hand to big toe more traditional claw them out inner triad of your right hand press it down hold for three hold for two your last chaturanga if you want it take it or leave it your choice inhale up dog cobra cow pose right back to down dog breath in the nose breath out the mouth beautiful seal your lips take a breath in gaze forward bottom of your exhale step walk hop float top of your space half lift inhale and forward fold right to mountain pose on your inhale sweep your arms out and up hands to heart last big pose hand to big toe so we don't have straps today so if your hamstrings are stronger you may not straighten your leg today but much like tree step your left foot into the earth pull your right knee up and grab a hold of your right big toe with your peace fingers and if this isn't going to work for you you can keep your knee bent We'll open it out to the side. We'll come back through center. So if you can grab your big toe, you'll try to extend forward through your heel. And you can do this with a slightly bent knee. Plug your right arm bone back into its socket. Steady your gaze forward. After a couple of deep breaths with your legs straight ahead, you'll open it out to the side. Nice, and much like tree pose, feel your left foot right sits bone you're drawing forward almost as if you're trying to rotate the underside of your right leg forward and up or your right heel forward and up so strong friends a lot of balance today switch it out come back through center release and then just switch sides so you'll Pull your left leg up, grab a hold of your big toe, 
or you can just keep your knee bent, extend your leg forward. So essentially, we have an upright position of pyramid pose with our leg extended forward, and then when we open it out to the side, we have an upward variation, a balancing variation of triangle pose. right back through center. Really nice. Release. Inhale. Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale. Forward fold. Take a halfway lift on an inhale. And then find a seat. Just drop your hips to the earth. Nice work, friends. You guys are looking strong and focused today. Bend your knees. Reach your arms forward. Palms to the sky. Count of five on to our backs, where we will stay, starting at five. Chest up, four, three, two, and one. Once your back touches the earth, send your feet to the sky. Find a happy baby's pose. Try to keep your hips relatively low to the earth. If you're reaching for your feet here and you feel your hips are lifting excessively, switch your grip. Grab your shins or your hamstrings. Try to get your low back grounded. And last little bit of physical effort here. So push and pull with equal pressure up and down. And at this point, you can start to let go of your pranayama. Let your breath start to find its natural cadence and rhythm. And pull your knees into your chest. Goal post your arms out onto either side of you. Take a deep breath in. And let your knees just fall over to the left. Gentle double supine twists. So compared to all of the other postures we went through today, this one fairly effortless physically. The effort we put forth here is the effort to stay present. Keep tabs on where your attention is at, where it's going. Try to keep it right here. So that's yoga's biggest invitation for us all is to be here now. Nice and slow, bring your knees back through center without rushing. Take a deep breath in and let your knees fall to the right. So recognize that balance in our lives for each and every one of us is going to look very, very different. It's like finding a balanced diet. It's going to be unique to you, what you have excessive in you, what you're deficient in. But really the key to finding balance in one's practice, in one's life, is first and foremost to become aware of where your imbalances lie. Until you can become aware of that, that's simply your reality. So awareness really is the key. And this practice is great for cultivating awareness. Bring your knees right back through center. One final squeeze. Make it an act of love towards yourself. Thank yourself for showing up today. Lots of things you could have done easier than this today. This is truly important work, not only for our own healing, in my humble opinion, the healing of the planet the world feels, feels this work that we do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And when you feel ready, final Shavasana. Lie yourself on to the earth. Palms up, jaw and eyes relax, shoulders fall back. Let everything just settle heavily. Feel supported. Let's share a final collective breath. 
Take a deep breath in through your nose. And a big breath out your mouth. Sweet surrender. 